So imagine then, if you're carrying, if you feel what, when you sin and when you're carrying sin, and, and the people that that have that know it, they know how it feels. Imagine if you're carrying all the sins of, of mm. all the human beings, mm. of all the world, of mm. all the ages. Mm. I mean, it, it would, it's something mm. that it's really mm. unthinkable, and in a way, humanly unbearable. This, mm. uh, there's. The only spirit that could bear that pain was Jesus. That was the only spirit that could yeah. bear that pain. Yeah. This this pain and despair is what made Jesus cry in the garden when he asked if his cup could be taken from him because he knew what was he going to what was he going to what was going to feel. But again, he said, "Lord, your will, not mine." And he also said to the apostles in Matthew twenty six thirty nine. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Okay? In, in Colossians, Paul teaches us that in verse in Colossians 5, 18 to 21, in verse 19, he, he teaches us that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And in verse 21, he also explains that God made him, Jesus, who had no sin to be sin for us. Yeah. And not only to carry our sin, he was made yeah. into sin. And, and it's like, you know, you can't even imagine. It's like, you, you can say, okay, this guy murdered the other guy. But imagine being murdered, being sin, being the thing. You know, it's impossible to imagine. Mm -hmm. So, he made him to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Yes, so my take, my, my take from all of this what is that the sacrifice that Jesus did on the cross for us 
on a day like today that we are remembering today for you and for me is the greatest sacrifice and the greatest gift ever performed in all eternity. No other act, action, event, nothing else will ever compare to what happened that day on the cross. Oh, yes. oh. And that is what I have. Thank you. Oh, He was forsaken that we might be accepted. Mm -hmm. Thank God for that. Well, our next word, Brother Carlos. And, uh, él necesita un trato. Bueno, creo que puede expresar sus, sus uh, pensamientos bien en inglés, pero creo que esta vez va a hacerlo en, en, uh, en español. inglés. Uh, no, en español. Y yo puedo ser uh, tra el traductor, pero creo que hay otros traductores aquí que pueden hacerlo mejor que yo. Who would like to be? Who would you like to be? I'm Carl. Anybody with Carl? Sí, sí, sí. Yes, Cynthia. Yes. Okay. Yes. Cynthia, but you also have to do the sign language. Oh, no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 Thank you. San Juan, which is in John, 1928. 1928. Después de esto, After this, Jesus knowing that everything Dijo para que la escritura se cumpliera. He said so that scripture could be fulfilled. Tengo sed. I thirst. El Señor Jesucristo. The, the Lord Jesus Christ. Había estado ya tres años ministrando. Had been ministering already for three years. Había hecho milagros. He had done miracles. Había perdonado pecados. He had forgiven sins. Y había sanado enfermos. He had healed the sick. También había multiplicado panes y peces. He also multiplied bread and fish. También había ya ahora en la cruz. Also on the cross. Ya se había hecho todo lo que se había dicho ya todo lo que se tenía que decir todo lo que tenía que hacer en, en ese momento moment, ahí en la cruz cross, el Señor Jesucristo hace una confesión o tal vez una petición él dice, tengo sed. He says, I thirst. Es una, esa confesión nos eh, entiendo que es una confesión humana. This confession, I understand, is a human confession. Él estaba, pues estaba con nosotros siendo eh, hombre. He was with us as a man con su divinidad, obviamente. Also with his divinity. Mm -hmm. Dijo, tengo sed. He said, I thirst. En esa confesión, In that confession, el Señor Jesús nos recuerda que, the Lord Jesus Christ reminds us that, que el verbo se hizo carne. That the word became flesh. Que el Hijo de Dios eh, estaba cumpliendo su propósito en ese momento. Que obviamente estaba eh, culminando o terminando precisamente ahora. Now, 
eh, el verbo se hizo carne. The word became flesh. Y habitó entre nosotros. And dwelt among us. Dice Juan Capo, uno Capo. John 1. Jesús conocía su propósito claramente. Jesus knew his very y él lo tenía muy claro. He had very clear in his en Filipenses hay, hay unos versos, en Filipenses 2, que yo creo que es la eh, síntesis. La síntesis. And, and lo voy a leer. Filipenses 2 el cual siendo en forma de Dios no estimó ser igual a Dios como cosa a que aferrarse sino que se despojó de sí mismo Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. Y estando en la condición de hombre. And was born as a human being when he appeared in human form. Sonilló a sí mismo. He humbled himself in obedience to God. Haciéndose obediente hasta la muerte y and, muerte de cruz. And died a criminal's death. Estos versos nos demuestran These verses demonstrate, ya que Jesús había otorgado perdón y había clamado al Padre en ese momento. También había sentido, tenía el sentimiento, llegó a tener el sentimiento de, de abandono, de soledad. Pero estaba eh, confesando una necesidad muy humana. He was confessing a very human need. Tengo sed. I thirst. Eh, voy a ser bien breve ya. I'll be pero very brief. yo eh, recuerdo que en Navidad me dio COVID. I remember at Christmas time I got COVID. Y, eh, Ustedes ya saben cómo es Alexandra. Y pues ya tiene a su mamá con cáncer y pues hay que cuidarla. Y recuerdo que ella me, me prohibió ir a la cocina. Yo estaba del cuarto a un, a un lado de, de, de la sala, ahí tenía que quedar. Ella me, serví, ella me servía todo. Eso. eso es lo positivo. Era lo positivo. Yo me servía todo. Eh, pero en una ocasión se fue y no me dejó agua. Y yo siendo obediente no, no iba a la cocina. Y recuerdo la sed intensa que, me, que yo sentía. Necesito tomar agua. Oye, pero el Señor, la sed del Señor nunca ha sido terrible. Me imagino por las heridas abiertas, claro, por las heridas abiertas, por los golpes. Ese camino al Golgota. En verdad que debe ser terrible. Correcto. 
esa sed del Señor nos recuerda o le, o le hace saber al mundo This thirst of the Lord reminds the world que Él vino y fue como uno de nosotros that he came and he was like one of us. sintió fatiga he dolor claro siendo guardando el 100%, siendo 100% humano y 100% Dios. Eh, tengo sed. El Hijo de Dios murió para que nosotros pudiéramos tener salvación para que tú y yo pudiéramos ser salvos el que no la hoy mismo el que no la tenga pues la puedo tener y con esto termino ese mismo ese mismo que murió en la cruz en el libro de Juan dice si alguno tiene sed venga a mí y beba Let him come to me and drink. el que cree en mí como dice la escritura de su interior correrán ríos de agua viva este me gusta más en Apocalipsis 21 ese que dijo tengo sed es el mismo que está sentado en el trono de Dios he aquí yo hago nueva todas las cosas yo soy el alfa y el omega principio y fin al que tuviera sed yo le daré gratuitamente la fuente de agua de vida Amén.
but there's nothing we can do. And that's what makes the gospel and the work of Jesus different from every religious in the world. Because it was God himself who did it for us. He who knew no sin became sin, so that we may become the righteousness of God, as I think I shared earlier. So what happened in between? God tried to show people why, uh, in order to, to know that we sin, he gave us the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments just made us realize that we could not keep them. And that, that, is, that is very interesting because it also says that um, the power of sin is the law. And that, that was a great revelation for me when I heard that scripture. That without the law, we would not have knowledge of sin. So God placed us the law so that it would be like a mirror. Mm -hmm. And we would see ourselves and recognize that we are lost. There's nothing we can do. And that if we just miss one commandment, we, we have to miss all of them. So why did Jesus have to come? Because he was God himself. And only a holy God, the holy blood of Jesus was the only thing that could wash away. And it says also in the Bible, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. That's why in the Old Testament we had uh, they had to bring sacrifices to to God to cover up the sin temporarily. It was only like a little painting over with the blood of the animals until that perfect sacrifice could come, and that was the sacrifice of Jesus. So another thing that Jesus did in 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 that work that is finished. Not only did he forgive our sins, not only did he give us life, eternal life, he gave us healing, and he gave us peace, and there's everything that is good was involved in that sacrifice. Yes. And he also redeemed us from the curse. There is a curse of the law, so all humanity was cursed. And when Jesus did what he did, that curse was taken. So there's so many, so many mysteries in, in, in that sacrifice. Even when I became a Christian, when I first presented myself to the Lord and I repented, I still didn't understand why did Jesus have to die on the cross? <laughs> Believe it or not. To me, uh, it was a process to understand. Yeah, he needed to die on the cross because of my sin, your sin sin on the whole world. So, um, what can I say? Uh, the life, it says in Leviticus uh, chapter 17, 11, the life of the flesh is in the blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. And it's finished now. When Jesus did make that sacrifice, there is no other way that we can be forgiven. Yes. There's no way we can get to God. Because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And there's no, no one uh, can come to the Father except through me. Amen. So that's why it's finished. It's done. Yes. Yes. And we thank Jesus for that. Amen. Somebody just lift up prayer, lift up a prayer, thanking God, Jesus, for what He did, and that it is finished. Somebody lift up a prayer. Yeah. Lord, we give you thanks for your sacrifice uh, in the cross for us, Lord. If it weren't for your sacrifice, we wouldn't even be alive today. Yes. We we. Sometimes we don't realize the importance of what happened in that day. And, and we want to let you know, Lord, that we are grateful 
for the for the present that you gave us for salvation for the opportunity of of eternal life with you in jesus name we thank you lord amen amen amen, amen. well we are now at the the last word the last words that jesus said on the cross what i found interesting is that the first word which was father forgive them he was addressing the father and the last word that he gives he is addressing the father it says father into your hands I commit my spirit. When I was preparing this, I was reminded of something I had probably shared here before, but I think it was somewhere, maybe in the mid-80s, I happened to be able to go to the island of St. Martin on the French side, and I was staying in a humble little church building. They had a little um, room in the back, and it was a Saturday morning, and now, most of you know I'm a beach guy. I'm not, that's, that's who I am. I understand the beach, I understand the water. And it's probably about nine or 10 in the morning, and all of a sudden I hear something that made me go, what is that? There's something you can hear probably two or three miles away. And I go to, to the window and everything, and I go, oh my, there's two guys with the biggest pig or hog that I have ever seen in my life. They had him tied up, and they were about, they were trying to, you know, do his neck, and, and uh, so that, you know, they could have a big piece of that. That pig knew what was going on. If you've ever heard a pig squeal, I mean, they can squeal. I mean, this pig was just squealing, squealing, just, I'm like, wow. And why I'm watching this, you know, through the window and everything, is like the Lord whispered to me, or spoke to me, he says, Well, first of all, I, I, in my mind, I says, that pig is not a willing sacrifice, yeah. you know? And then the Lord just spoke to me. He says, I went to the cross willingly for you. Wow. I went to the cross willingly. Wow. He wasn't forced. He wasn't made. He went willingly. Awesome. This is what we see here in this word right here where Jesus said, Father, into your hands. I commit my spirit. He went willing. The word, some versions say, I commend my spirit, I entrust my spirit, I place my spirit, I commit my spirit to you. And in the Greek, it's an active thing. It's meaning that he's engaged in that. Elsewhere, he said, I lay down my life, all right, of my own free will. You know, so a couple of truths I will get out of this. Number one, is that Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you and willingly gave himself for you. He gave himself willingly. It was a willing sacrifice. A willing sacrifice. The truth number two, Jesus said, into your hands I commit my spirit. As human beings, we have bodies, we have souls, we also have spirits, and it's good to remember that your spirit lives on. After you breathe your last breath, your spirit will live on eternally, forever and ever. So it's a really good thing to do to make sure that you're right with God before you breathe your last breath, because your spirit will live on. As we saw earlier, one of the thieves cursed Jesus until his last breath, the other thief said, Lord, mercy on me, please remember me. So we want to follow the example of that one. The third truth that I get out of this is that God's hands are open to you. God's hands are open to you. Jesus said, Father, into your hands I entrust, I commit my spirit. And it's very obvious, whatever generation we live in, but Paul said, in the last days, it's going to be very perilous, very dangerous, very uncertain days. And those of us who are even 1% aware of the news, we can say very, very uncertain times. And so this seventh word is a good word for each one of us in the time in which we're living. Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commit 
to myself. You know, something I do for myself on a daily basis, I say, and I know many of you do this, Father, I commit myself to you. I entrust myself totally to you. I entrust my wife to you. My family, you know where they are. I entrust them to you, the spiritual family, God. Lord, you know them. Lots of times I name your names. Father, I, I entrust them into your care, uh, Lord. And um, you know, it's, a, it's a good way to, to live, and it's a good thing. Now, in doing this, um, I came across something by Pastor Andy Elms, who wrote The Blueprint Church. Uh, some of you have read that. And he says this. It says, when it comes to kids, I have five. One boy and four girls. It says, sometimes I want to get t-shirts printed for my girls, making them wear it every time they go out, saying, this is my daughter. Harm her, and I will hunt you down with a chainsaw, and I will torture you. Now, Andy goes on to say, I know that's not right. You can see the heart of a father in there, though. He says, I know that's not right, but I also know that a better, more effective thing to do is to daily commit them to the one who is able to keep them from all harm, the one who neither slumbers nor sleeps. So Jesus is giving us a good example of his own self before he's about to die. And if you're about to die, you know it, a good thing to do. Father, I commit myself to you. But it's a good thing on a daily basis. You know, the, uh, the Jewish children, this is a bedtime prayer for them. Not the father part, but this is taken, this always touches me because Jesus is quoting Psalm 31. Jesus died with the word of God in his mouth. Wow, think about that. And he says, into your hands I commit my spirit. And so Jewish children are taught to pray, into your hands I commit my spirit. And I think a really good thing for us to do every morning, come as a child. Come as a child. Come, like, come, simply come with a childlike spirit and say, God, I don't know how to do life myself. I don't know how to think right. I don't know how to live right. I don't know what's going to happen today, God. But Father, I entrust myself. I commit myself to you. And then after you do that, just rest. Rest in perfect assurance that he's got everything under control. Everybody else may be stressing out around you, but you entrust everything to him, and he's going to take care of it. Please Amen. repeat after the, this prayer. Gracious Lord, Gracious Lord, I entrust my life to you. I entrust my life to you. I trust you and you alone. I trust you and you alone to be my savior. Be my savior. I submit to your sovereignty, I submit to your sovereignty over, my life, over my life and everything and everybody around me. And everything and everybody around me. I entrust all to you. I entrust all to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord.